white brush pen to get some of the negative space in between these branches and create a little bit more complexity to this branching structure. Already I have a foreground and a midground with these branches just by virtue of the blurred wet and wet layers subsequently followed by the more defined and sharper edged branches that I created. Now this further delineates and creates another distance element by giving the illusion of light coming through from some of the very far distant branches in a very blurred way because I'm making sure that my edges are not too sharp and I'm only painting this negative space in the already blurred areas of the more distant background. As I do this, I'm also keeping in mind shapes of branches. I'm not just randomly adding white bits. I'm actually sort of sculpting these curves and edges of distant twigs and boughs. Some of them are curved and some of them are straight edged, but there is this awareness in my mind as I'm doing this. As I said, it's not random. And there has to be a continuity as well between what you can see and the overlapping branches so that it doesn't just vanish once a branch comes across. You have to continue that lightened area on the other side of the branch. some tiny little birds. Flying across here. just silhouettes because they're so small and distant. I left the core of the tree, this area, clear of my white negative space highlights because that's going to be the densest part of the foliage and you're not really going to see much light coming through anything over there at, at all just because there's, there's going to be so many overlay, overlayered, overlapping branches and things. So really where you're going to see this kind of light coming through is along the edges. very lightly skimming this surface, the tip of my brush just across the surface. And 
that's some final darker defined bits even darker than the existing brown. This would be extreme foreground stuff. Deep shadow over here. <laughs> 